Hi and welcome to session number two. In this following session, I will talk about the difference in the direct route of pleasure and the indirect route of pleasure and how to create a holistic permission agreement field with your partner when you touch your partner or your partner is touching you. All right, enjoy. There were some questions uh, over the break. Yes, um, one of our questions was... It was, uh, you talked about the somatic system when the, you're touching the apple, for example, and it's, it's my you know, reaction from the apple, but the apple quite dead. But when I touch Christina, I can feel her and she can feel me on her, her skin. Is it the same system she feels for her system with the brain when I touch her? And the signals, because it's a very, it's a big difference touching this apple and touching. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the apple more. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a very important distinction, and um, when when it comes to touching an object, it's a different thing. When you touch a person, you don't want to objectify a person, because when you touch a person, you have an. A, you know, there's a living dynamic and a living energetic behind that and the, the um, feedback loop that you have when you feel it yourself. The same thing, the, the same direct inflow happens to the person that you touch. And there are the mirror neurons included and the mirror neurons in your own loop, they're getting synchronized or they're not synchronized. And this is the idea where we start to harmonize them. And um, so it's a great question. I go and into that. You feel that it's the yeah. same feeling and you are do in the same loop. Y yes, yes. And uh, so, so I will build that this evening a little bit more precise so that you really get that. And um, it's when, when you get that, it's just like, why haven't anybody told me that before? Mm. <laughs> it's, it makes so much sense. So, so great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so <coughs> a, few, a few little things, um, uh, loose ends. Over there, there are little bottles. Yeah, they are unused and there is some fluid coconut oil. So please feel free, each one of you, to take a bottle and fill that up as much as you like for self-massage or massage your partner. So uh, please take use of them. So they're here for you and you can take them with you afterwards. So I have always a little bottle in my bag because there's always a great opportunity. And I started to, they're so great, these little bottles. You can flip them open with a thumb, you turn them around, squeeze them, and you can click them through and then you just can use it with one hand. You know, it's, 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 it's good stuff to do, <laughs> you know how to do it. This was one piece. Another piece is, um, Yes, um, so the session goes probably 10.30ish, maybe 10, so I'll see how it goes, how it flows, because you had all probably a long week and a long drive here, and so I don't want to overwhelm you so that you get enough rest, and um, so that we have at 11 o'clock kind of a collective silence in a way so normal music and normal loud talking kind of just like normal talking um, so in respect for other people who want to sleep and rest so from 11, yeah. fr from 11 on so no more kind of loud sound except moaning <laughs> <laughs> so whenever moaning is happening you don't need to <laughs> so so if 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 you want to rest and somebody's moaning in another room just like uh, this is something that, and, and you're feeling annoyed, you, yeah. you, you can bring that up, you know. I always. Then you work with your annoyance. <laughs> right. <laughs> Instead of wanting to quiet them, no. Yeah. I personally always enjoy hearing when people <laughs> are getting into themselves, so. Mm. Um, that was pretty much it, was it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. 
then. Um, let's weave that all together. So normally when I do w this kind of work with people um, and we just have felt and touched the object, then I uh, ask that question. Now I would like to give you another object and that's another person's hand. And because there is another, uh, as, 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 a, as a person attached to that hand, you need to have permission. Yeah. You are already <laughs> <laughs> familiar with each other to a degree but the permission piece is something that is really important to the body and I would like to talk more about that tomorrow when I guide you into finding the bliss state but we all when we are in relationship and relating with each other most people have a so-called assumed permission mm. yeah and because it's so important that we don't know what that really is with permission, that I have created that in, in the book is written down as, I call it the four pillars of relating. And the first pillar is being capable of feeling it for yourself, so self-love, self-care. And the second pillar is specifically in relating, having permission that is not an assumed permission to touch another person or that you as well have the, the right and responsibility to give somebody else permission. Yeah. So an important piece is because you just spoke about dancing, mm -hmm. um, that I was invited once in Bali from a, um, a contact info teacher who had uh, issues with people who feeling violated through other people being touched in a way and then they're trying to move aside and then somebody else is just following them and then they're feeling invaded and, 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 and because they have not given them permission and, and I was sitting there and heard how he has built up the frame, the container in the beginning. And, and then I recognized when I came to the, uh, to the contact in procession that when I go there, and this is in most sessions as well as in a relationship, that when I go there, I don't ask um, people to do something for me or to me you know, because it's nonverbal. And nobody's asking me to do something for them. So therefore, uh, there are two important dynamics out of the window. And another one is that um, I'm asking, I'm not asking anybody for permission um, that I can touch them. Yeah? So I have an assumed permission literally because this is a frame of dancing in, in contact info but the only thing that I could do is I can literally allow other people to touch me without any verbal agreement or anything so I brought that into the frame into the container and said just like well you just need to be clear that each one of you is giving anybody else in the room permission to touch you and if you don't feel comfortable with being touched then of course it's your right and responsibility to move away yeah. And this is what is happening in many relationships. So we have assumed permission that it's okay to touch each other. But what is it when you feel it's not okay? And where is that going? And so this is what I would like to do first. And you need to choose how deep you want to dive into that. So we demo that first. And then you have a few moments just like to communicate that with, with each other, how deep you want to do that. And it looks pretty much this way. So for example, with the object, because I don't want to objectify Jessica, and then I show you why that is uh, in, in a little bit, I need to ask for that permission piece. And th this is how it sounds. So the way how I touch and feel my hand on, on anything, anywhere in the world, I just want to make sure that you are included in my world that I can reach out to you whenever, however I want to and feel you and touch you. And I would like to ask you for that permission um, that is it okay that I touch you whenever, however, wherever with any part of my body, uh, whenever I want, 
and uh, you take care of your limits or your boundaries if I uh, reach them or you, you feeling them reached. Yes. Yeah? Mm. yeah. Okay, so mm. just by this little conversation, I have now access and I don't, like in holistic access, I don't need to ask every five seconds again. It's like, oh, can I touch you here on your leg? And, <laughs> and, and, and can I kiss you? And can I do this? This is, uh, I have heard another teacher saying it's a, it's a pussy dryer. <laughs> yeah. But also the last part in this is so <coughs> important that I have the responsibility for my limits. Mm -hmm. And that means, no, you cannot touch my pussy in front of my mom or like whatever. <laughs> like, no, I think it was a bad example, but you understand. Like, it's like, uh, it's, it's like here and now I have another limit than mm -hmm. I had just over there. And then the responsibility is on me to, to tell if I think that he uh, goes over my uh, limitations or my uh, boundaries because otherwise it's a, like a, oh I didn't know that I was not allowed to touch you there and then in, in that environment and in that like okay yeah because we have an agreement that I tell you if I don't mm. want that yeah. and um, yeah. yeah so the same dynamic happens in reverse yeah do I have your allowance to touch you however I want with any body parts uh, and are you taking care of your limits and tell me if something is not okay? Absolutely yes. Thank you. Yeah, you absolutely can do that whenever you want and I take mm. care of my limits if, if I have them. Yeah. Mm. So then it's in place, it's installed, it's mm. there, you know. And that means as well that each and one of us whenever in life can evoke our permission. So, for example, if a relationship goes in different directions, that's like, okay, you have no longer permission to touch me. You, you don't have this right any longer anymore. And if you do that, you will cross my boundaries and that I, I give you a clear no here. That's not okay anymore. But as long as you have this permission, just go for it. The shop is open. It's, I'm yours. Mm -hmm. Have me with every part of my body. Yeah, and that can also be a short amount of time. Like, I'm so upset now, I don't want you to touch me. Mm. It's like they have an argue, and it's like, no, mm. now it's not okay. I just mm. want to be in my space. Mm. You're not allowed to touch me now. And mm. then it's like, okay, now, now the time is over, and now it's okay again. Mm. Makes sense to everyone? Yeah. So I would like to give you this few minutes with each other, just to establish this, just for yourself go beyond this assumed permission. Mm -hmm. It will make a big difference. Okay. What can it look like for you? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so at this point, I would like to invite you to reflect on this dynamics. If you have ever given this holistic permission or if you have ever gotten this holistic permission, and if you feel like, please, push the pause button for about three, four minutes and have with your partner this conversation about asking for holistic permission and uh, giving holistic permission. All right. Bring that to a completion. <laughs> yes, it was really good. Nice, very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it has an impact. <laughs> it's, it's like a marriage, right? <laughs> Okay, can I can I have some feedback? So 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 I just heard maybe you want to start because you're just <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. This is the, I, I I call that the cornerstone of empowerment because it gives you your power of choice, mm. and you're responsible for your yeah. desires. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Mm. So there are a few steps to that. Um. Let's start with that one first. Um, sometimes you notice that, for example, as Jessica said, when we are with my mom, I don't want you to touch my yoni. I don't want yeah. <laughs> Even though I have permission. 
Nem tudom, hogy ez Mert nem az, hogy nem az ég. Várj, 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 And there was somebody saying, specifically when it comes to this permission piece, if you ask me, and now you have this permission already, but if you ask me um, if you can touch me and you cannot feel me that I am a yes, then it is a no because you can't feel me. If you can't, f if if you need to ask me, if you can't feel I am a yes, then you can't feel as well the no. Mm. And then it has to be a no. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if I cannot feel that it's not okay to touch a yoni when you, when you're with your mom, even if I have permission, then it has to be a no. Mm. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. when you're not consenting. If I, I yeah, that's yeah. Where, where it's appropriate, yeah, where, where it's you can feel the energy. Like, yeah, it's just like oh, you can feel it right away. Yeah, it's not okay, and then you feel it. Yeah, and that's a no. Yeah. Everybody gets that. Yeah, because it's when it's, when it's about limit, it's not about testing limits. Oh. It's respecting values. Yeah. It's a complete different thing. Mm -hmm. So talking about values. Yeah. So. This is a value that that we have. This is nothing that I invented. It's just like it just became just obvious and clear to me. So because you said that as well, uh, Gary, that when when you touch somebody else, when you dance, for example, um, can you feel what's going on? Yeah, and in the environment, for example, of contact impro, there is in in a frame and in a container there is this. Most of the time, assume, but it's 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 a verbalized or non-verbal consent agreement in there. That's okay to touch somebody else when you're in the in, in the frame of a dance. But when you just look in the bigger picture, <coughs> and and give you that as an example with both of us, and 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 you need to answer that for yourself from your core. Just like, can Jessica give me permission to touch the chair? No. Can I give Jessica permission to touch the chair or an object or anything? No. No. Can Jessica give me permission to touch somebody else? Mm. <laughs> no. No. Does really feel into that. This is really an important piece. Can she? Because this is autonomy. An agency of my of, of, of my rights of my base of feeling myself. Nobody ever can give me permission. Neither my my parents, the police, anybody else in the world can give me permission to touch a chair or feel. But we are all conditioned to a degree that we're not allowed to some degree to touch or feel. So that means nobody in this world can give me permission to touch or feel anybody else or anything else. The same opposite around. I cannot give Jessica permission to touch anybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is impossible. But we do that. Yeah, we we, we create a, f a sense of betrayal or jealousy or inadequacy or awkwardness or whatever we feel when our partner is touching somebody else. We feel rejected. We feel excluded and all that thing. So this is the package that comes with it. Yeah? And stuff will cook up. And can you be with this? And can you express that? Because this permission does not exist in the first place. So you have already agreed, um, uh, no, uh, how do you say that? Uh, an established agreement. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so you, have, you have established you want to relate um, monogamous mm -hmm. and um, so, so this is a value that you have both established mm -hmm. 
and on that value um, you just build your container or your relationship yeah I I don't call that monogamous so so people call that or everybody needs to call that the way how the value is expressed mm -hmm. we call it for example exclusivity mm -hmm. yeah, so 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 I have the value that I want to be sexually so intercourse exchange of bodily fluid mm -hmm. exclusive with Jessica mm -hmm. yeah? that does not mean that I have the desire being with other people but I have a value here and this value and this is a really really important um, thing to feel into that I have a commitment here mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and and but this is where the difference uh, is really really important I have a commitment to my value I don't have a commitment to Jessica mm -hmm. I have a commitment to my value and you can you can count on my commitment to my value because that's the level I want to relate with and the same commitment I want to feel from you do you have a commitment to your value not a commitment to me this makes all the difference in relating right yeah I am committed to a value that I'm having and my commitment to my value this is how you can count on me for example, I'm a sexual body worker. Yeah. So I have people coming, women <laughs> or men or couples coming into my sessions and I work with them. So we are body worker. There's some people are body worker. And I need to be clear that you know you cannot give me that permission that I this fly is annoying. Yeah. So, so you, you cannot give me permission that I cannot touch somebody. You can feel it it's be difficult for you that I do that. And then we can communicate about that. And then we see how you feel and what are you afraid of? What's the, is, am I clear with what I'm doing, what I'm providing? Yeah? This value comes uh, with integrity. Yeah? And integrity is nothing that you can pretend. You have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. So, so that means you cannot lie to yourself when you touch somebody and then pretend actually I have no other agenda behind that, but actually I don't want to get late and just like try to sneak away. So, so we cannot lie to ourselves, to our value. We have it or we don't. Yep. And, and that comes with this rock solid integrity. Yeah. What you call that, this uh, disalignment? Uh, no, or. or uh, uh, incongruent and, and not integrity yeah. this is what I would call as a disalignment of thoughts words and action that that we might think we can kind of sneak or steal away if we're not aware of that but everybody else will see it and That's feel right. it mm. yeah That's exactly it. yeah and and, and and it becomes very obvious yeah. mm. so, so, so we have it or we <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and, and, and and that never works. And at least this is this is how I feel that specifically when it comes to relationship, so to this set of value and the self commitment and the agreement. Um, when, for example, jealousy comes into the game, yeah? I I think jealousy is absolutely important and vital because it's an indicator on an. Um, uh, intuitive level that there is something not in alignment mm -hmm. something is or something is off here we have to have a conversation <laughs> I, I, I see I feel I hear yeah, yeah? but don't um, mistakenly compare jealousy with comparisons with another person mm -hmm. so so I personally think that there is a healthy form of jealousy and I see that as a barometer as an indicator of intuition, yeah, and 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 I love to bring it into a place that I call ownership, and the ownership. What's the real feeling behind that, and is it a comparison or is it something that you are aware of, a disalignment, mm -hmm. and and but I don't want to go too much into this direction, <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, this would then go more into trauma and healing and mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, yeah. But but this is the kind of as far as deep as I want to tip that toe in there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I talk more later about the um, 
the difference between the serotonin pathway or the dopamine pathway when it comes to the reward center and gratification. Because um, when, when it comes to any kind of addictive behavior, um, as a substitution of sexual um, uh, fluency, then, then it's a disconnection from a source. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, and if it's a tantric path, it's just like, sorry, that doesn't work. Mm. It's, 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 uh, it doesn't work. So, okay. yeah. That doesn't mean just like enjoy a glass of wine or have a coffee in the morning or something else, but. Uh, Kind of just like as an addictive behavior, it's a different thing. Okay, does it make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's change gears and just go into the I think you said that touching the apple uh, is a different thing, and we just want to go. And then I just said we, we go into the indirect route because we talked about the direct route. So, what I do is when I, when I draw something, I will just glue that and I just made a one for the first kind of slide mm -hmm. so that you see there are in no order the way how we did them so that you can literally uh, recall them okay so now we go from that one from the somatic part of the nervous system the motor the sensory the inflow the loop feeling you know the object and um, there's no permission uh, that you can give your partner to feel <laughs> um, uh, into the indirect route and what that means and how human engagement and connection is really built and, and, and function and um, ready for that one? Yes. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. And then, and then we go in some exercises to show you um, how the flow, how to find the flow based on that what we've done so far. All right, so. This thing called um, direct and indirect. Um, so I just do the same thing here with the brain. Then this time I try to make a better hand. <laughs> it's a little bit better, right? Yes. Good. <laughs> it's, missing it's missing a finger. <laughs> so, you go into an action. Is that color? I want to stay in there. Oh, no, that was blue. So, so you go, you go into an action. So you motor and move your hand yeah and in this case we touched an object and you felt this coming back here is your hands and all the nerve ending and then that goes back into your brain and then your pleasure center is fire so you're your sensory. So it's the same picture like that. So now, instead of touching, touching an apple or a banana or, or, I don't know, something else, you touch your partner. Yeah? And assume that you have learned that the direct route is activated. You can feel yourself on your partner. You just feel yourself without any agenda, without anything else, you're connected, you feel. When you touch your partner, and that what you do, kind of, you just actually feel that, kind of this tingling on your, on your fingers, and somehow through the mirror neurons, you just now when you're touching her on the neck or on an erogen zone or somewhere else, you can literally feel into your partner when you touch that, that this gives goosebumps and that makes her feel extremely, oh, <laughs> and she's giving the sound and her body starts to move and ooh, that's good. Yeah. And she is doing this one here, yeah, so she feels good. 
and you just you are aware of that and that is landing somewhere here in your in your pleasure center um, how does it make you feel amazing. amazing right everybody is agreeing that it's amazing do you laugh that when you touch your partner when you feel your your hands and your fingers and she's going to oh, oh my god no. <laughs> we all agree to that. <laughs> that is good, right? Yeah. But for, for all of us here, because we are all loving, caring beings, we're just touching our partner and just like, when I know I just put my hands there, just like, who is this guest? This comes back immediately. And, and, and we know that that's nice. Yeah. That is called indirect pleasure. Yeah. So you do something you feel yourself and you see your partner responding to that what you do and that comes back and that gives a bigger loop yeah everybody's with me yeah so this bigger loop this is where you just actually can start to play in this loop this is where you start to feel because if you do that and your partner is doing that at the same time, that goes through the roof. Under one circumstances, that you don't lose yourself in your partner's responses. You need to stay in connection and feel yourself. You have to be capable of, it doesn't matter where your partner goes, that you stay in connection with your own skin, with your own inflow, through your own action, what you do, while when your partner's touching you, that you feel at the same time what is happening to your body when they, when they touch you. Yeah? And there's a, there's a balance in there it's between um, uh, dominance um, and um, what's the opposite way? Submission. I wouldn't say submission in the form, but uh, uh, dominance and, and submission, but but in, in a subtle way. Yeah, that means who who is in charge at the same time? Because if both are in dominance, you have a fight. Yeah, and if both are in submission, nothing is happening. Yeah, so there needs to be a balance, and in most in most relationships. There's one person a little bit more dominant or, or, or much more dominant, yeah? And there's nothing right or wrong who is more dominant. It's just like to be capable of how that flows. So we have that sometimes. We have sometimes both in submission. It's just like, <laughs> this is <just>, okay. <laughs> and then we have the other side. We have just kind of the, the, the fight around. So the important here is, again, and that was your friend, if this thing, the direct route, is not happening, people tend to get dependent on the response because this is all what they can feel, that something is coming back. And if this is not coming back, what they desire, they are lost in the other person's respond or not response. And then when the other person responds differently than they expect, then they um, try to change it. So then, then there comes an agenda in. We're just doing something because we need to get that back to feel manipulation. this. Uh, it can go like into manipulation. I have, uh, I, I, I can write a book just about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like, I want you to respond in a certain way mm. when I touch you otherwise, like, it's like I'm dependent on that, mm -hmm. but then you lost the touch. It kind of doesn't really matter what the response is. Yeah. yeah. The, what really matters is on one point, and this is, I mean, even, you know, I've, before I found that one, I was a master, a master in body work in, do, in doing this one. Just like I could just touch people and bring them into wherever I want them to get in nine of 10 cases. And in the one case, because this one was just like, I don't know what was what I was doing in a way, I was just lost in just like, oh fuck, I'm, what am I doing? I'm doing something wrong, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. 
And what was wrong is I couldn't feel myself. Yeah. So, so the, the, the intention here is even though you just become, you're really good and you can feel what's coming back and you just enjoy what your partner is feeling and it's just really so good, is, and that is a value that you have to declare for yourself that this one here is your number one, your default. Yeah. Never get lost in the Feel your well. Of course you can, but if you know how to get back, then mm -hmm. this 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 is your compass. This is always your way back. This is just like this is you come back to your body, you come back to your senses, your feelings, to your sensations. Yeah. Like and I'm touching, waiting for respond, yeah. mm -hmm. or I'm touching and I'm feeling yeah. touch. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Yeah. This one is super super important. Don't underestimate that thing. So we are not touching apples here. <laughs> We're not touching bananas. We're touching our beloved. We just want to go together on a journey. We want to just like thrive and just lift it up and going into this realm where we just really want to play and hang out with. Yeah. Um, but this is, um, uh, even if it's so good and so important, it's secondary. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I do that for so long. <laughs> this is so funny. And I offer so many practices, and I've done that in so many places, like Engsbacher and trainings and so on. And then I just like say, okay, let's do that. Let's put, take an object in your hand, and then you see people just like, oh, not again. I've done that. Just like, okay. So, so people respond in this way, just like, okay, you're not here, definitely. Because if you can feel yourself, there's no reason not to feel yourself. Because it's activated or it's not activated. That's simple as it is. I mean, it's it's so it's so interesting. So I just really break it down in the book. So and, and a few of you were at the de armoring training who know how, how I'm teaching it there, and I'm I'm not going deep into this dynamic that we do here now. I we do the opposite. I'd, I'd say in the first place, okay, if you really want to good in giving, you have to stop giving and learn to receive first. Establish the number one. And then when you know it's for you, you can actually rest that part. Mm -hmm. But if you do a profession out of that and become a practitioner, it doesn't matter what you do, you just have to turn that around. You know, just like this is secondary. You need to feel yourself fully, but you have to put here this as your number one when you work with other people because you want to make sure that the response comes out of them that they came mm -hmm. to your work for. And then, and then we build on that. But this is not a profession here. We, we don't work on each other. Yeah. We want to love each other. We want to yeah. melt and dive and, and, and get mushed <laughs> into <laughs> oneness. That's, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so that's, that's what the difference between this kind of put the priorities on, on, on yourself and then on your partner. But you just do that with just all love and care. Yes. Somehow. Yes. Even if you turn it around. Yes. You base it on this yeah. number one. Yeah. 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 Many many body worker and practitioner don't know that one. Mm. Yeah. And and it's very liberating. It does, this has changed my profession mm -hmm. drastically. Mm. Okay. Let's play a little bit. Um, let's let's use that place over there. I just noticed that I missed to turn on music. <laughs> no, no, I was good without music. I liked without music. Oh, really? Yeah, was it so good without music? Okay. Our body created music. Okay. Okay. Any reflections or noticing? So. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting in every relationship. Even this is little thing you have noticed for yourself that there is a, a dance between power and surrender so the, the way how it flows right mm -hmm. and in every relationship one has a little bit more dominance mm -hmm. what is the nature of it mm -hmm. you know and um, so I personally um, I guess to some degree when it comes to our sensuality and sexuality I am more the dominant person I would say and and yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I love that domain. This is my kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I claim my kingdom. Yeah. And, 
and even though when I claim my kingdom and and uh, and the, the the dominance is just switching over to the other side, it's just like okay, so now I give you the power, but but I stay in I I stay in charge here. Yeah, so and and this is what I so loved on Barry Long's work. He calls that the inner authority, specifically for um, men or being in a man's body, because when when we are in the sexual expression, the energy of being in sympathetic and full expression when it comes to lovemaking is a different dynamic being in a man's body than being in a woman's body. And the authority that I love to claim here as a man, and, and everybody has to claim that for themselves, is that I'm very clear about the I, I take and keep that authority that this is not about the goal. It doesn't matter where we go, it doesn't matter where you go, it doesn't matter how high I go, I will keep that authority and I'll make sure that we don't go over this edge. So I take the full charge and the full responsibility here. Yeah. And sometimes I just sometimes I'm I'm kind of you know I have micro moments just like and then just like and then you just look at me and just like stay. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then kind of I just breathe through. So tomorrow so I just want to show more about how that all works with the nervous system the sympathetic, the parasympathetic and how that all works with kind of um, uh, expanding or contraction and being in a place of uh, knowing how to find that specific bliss state and how this physically neurologically in the body, in the body looks like when it comes to this edge and each one of you has probably their own experience that I would like to invite you to put into the equation mm -hmm. so to hear each other out so I don't have the wisdom on my own because you have all your own body wisdom and I would like to hear uh, where you are and then kind of see how I can contribute with my own experiences and what I have learned and what you have experienced and learned and so it's a full day tomorrow so I would like to bring it to a completion for now. My invitation to you is um, when you go and p if you choose to play tonight a little bit, so go with the inflow for both of you. So you're both in this direct at the same time. Why you feel the other, your partner in their indirect flow, how they might feel and just go in a deeper layer of kind of uh, float with it and there might be a, a dynamic of dominance and surrender coming up so allow yourself to play with it as much as you like yeah mm -hmm. the the invitation is again if it gets really kind of hot and sensual and sexual is just um, try to refrain from climaxing because I talk more to more about that what the impact of climax is on the neurological level mm -hmm. and how that all works and so on yeah okay thank you thank you, thank you. so tomorrow morning at eight o'clock i do tre yeah. it's not eight o'clock it's not mandatory but i would highly recommend yeah. you to what do it? it it's um it's a brainstem biohack that that literally allows your kundalini to wake up and release all tension that is related to any holding patterns. It's just the, 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 the brainstem activity. Just to have the experience and then later I, I, I show how the nervous system works and why this is so important and having access to this very part. Good night. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Just arrive. So <laughs> was a lot of... Uh, building container and talking and sharing and tomorrow do much more practice and stuff play a little bit of music and you feel like dancing and moving and having a tea and chit chat and
Welcome at the end of session two. I hope you have uh, found the different uh, interesting about the direct and the indirect inflow and how to create permission and how this dynamic might play out in your relationship. Okay, and the following session, session number three, is about TRE and how to activate the brainstem activity to release tension and literally to self-regulate your nervous system and go away from trauma and some people call it the hidden kundalini activation method. All right, see you in the following session about TRE.